Okay, so the next element we're going to be looking at is shading, and this is probably going to take up the bulk of this tutorial. And I've had to turn my fan on, so if you can hear a weird, a weird whirring in the background, it's my fan. I'm sorry, I hope it doesn't affect sound quality too much. So shading, I usually advise people to choose their background before they start shading but I don't do it myself. I know it's awfully hypocritical of me and I'll explain why I suggest it to other people. When you're starting shading, I think you need to try and imagine where your light source is coming from, where the sun is, where your shadows are going to be on the ground, um, whether there's going to be any kind of shadow against a wall, elements like that and I think that's harder to do if you don't know what your background is going to be. Because I generally don't do it myself in terms of I prefer working on a transparent background I'm just going to do some very general shading with you. I'm not going to go into any great, great detail in terms of um, lighting on the skin but there are areas that tend to be shaded in terms of tend to be shadowed for, for example the inside of legs underneath layers of clothing underneath the chin around the hairline unless you have light sources coming from all sides those areas tend to be in shadow so we're going to sort of tackle those bits first I usually start with the face because that's just the way I do things if you find that it's better to do the body first and that's absolutely fine there's no reason why you shouldn't do that with the face um, there are various elements that you can that you can sort of use to make the face more 3d to make it more realistic and to make it just pop a bit more as with anything I do, I always say less is more. And another really, really important piece of advice is to make sure that you make a new layer for every single new bit of shading you start. Every new edit you make to your picture should always be on a new layer. And it's something that I've only got into the practice of doing myself, maybe within the last year, pretty recently. Um, but honestly, it has saved so much trouble in the long run. So I'll try and actually say when I'm making a new layer. But best practice is to make a new one every time you start doing something different. So the first thing I'm going to do is create shading around the hairline. And for this we need a relatively big brush, not quite this big. Depends on the size of the raw image I think that should be fine sort of a um, sort of midly a midly I'm creating new words sort of around 50% I guess somewhere around that maybe a little bit less creating a new layer and then again nothing I do is particularly precise you're just gonna paint roughly not like really roughly but you know, just relatively close to the edge of the hair. We're not going to approach the chin shadow just yet. wherever there's edges of hair I think that is going to be about right zoom out a little bit so we can see the entire bit of what we've done then we're going to go to filter blur Gaussian blur and then using sort of what you think is best really 
keeping in mind we're going to make some edits to the opacity and stuff and also we can erase bits we don't want but I think around there is going to be a little bit less and around there is going to be good ok that now we can see bits at the top here that the blur hasn't pushed the shading far enough into so what we can do about that is control T to transform what we've done right click and warp. I use warp a lot. It's it's up there with liquify in the tools that I love the most. And then just as we did with liquify, just nudge can't talk properly. Just nudge bits along. that looking okay too much and then okay yeah. then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a soft eraser not too small and a, a pretty low opacity and I'm just gonna You really don't have to be ever so precise, just nudge shading away. Again, little short clicks I find best. Just nudging shading away from bits where you don't want it. zoom out and see how that looks now to me to my eye at least that already looks more realistic it looks more 3d and it just looks better with lacking a better way to describe it so I'm gonna zoom in again and now I'm going to show you how I approach eyes now this is usually a good time to tidy up anything that you need to. For example, here under my eye where my bottom eyelash isn't quite as well modified as I thought it was. A really small brush can be 5 pixels I think for this. Maybe even a bit less. 2. Yeah, 2 same hardness is fine and then just stroke black into that area and zoom out and make sure that it looks okay it really looks a bit harsh and that close but far away it looks fine one process which I use mainly with close-ups because it's not so noticeable on on full length pics but it's a really good way of making the eyes look more dimensional it's really easy and that's creating a new layer having a brush size a little bit bigger than we just use maybe five-ish yeah and again hardness is fine like that black and then what we're going to do is basically paint a curve don't know how well you'll be able to see it. Paint a curve just underneath the top set of eyelashes. Same on the other side. When we've done that, go back to blur and Gaussian blur. Less blur than we used before. 1.5 is fine. And then again with a bigger razor, a bit harder than we used before, we can up the opacity a little too. We're just gonna take that line out of keep on 
on the other side because we don't want to completely mask the eye and I think I'm happy with that so that's really all we need to do with the face if we were doing a headshot then there would be more elements but apart from the chin shadow I think that's about it for the face so let's approach the body now with shading on the body it's really going to depend on the clothing you or the client is wearing with this cardigan I want to shadow the inside of my arm here where it meets the cardigan then at the bottom and also on the inside where it's layered against my t-shirt and we do it in exactly the same way that we did the shadowing around the hairline and even the same size brush a little bit bigger maybe as we used before is fine creating a new layer and then hopefully you'll have existing lines where your shadowing should be so we can see here at the top where my arm starts we can start oh and I've got a razor selected it's not a good idea okay so just paint nothing that I do is it particularly involves any great artistic skill um, which is just as well really <laughs> then around this bit and below and the waistband is another place where there'd be a shadow you can bring it up the side and into the neck here. I'm not going to do this bit yet because I think we need to have a finer brush for that but for this main cardigan bit I think that's that's fine. Again zoom out a bit so we can see everything nice and clearly. Go back to blur and gorge and blur. We want this Decently blurred. Go around that from 13. And okay it. And then we'll want to take the opacity down a bit. Be around 170. And then going back with our eraser, making it soft and reasonably big, opacity down to around 30 I guess. Just erase the bits that we don't necessarily want to be so shaded. No, we don't really want the top cardigan to be shaded. You can be as precise as you want if you wanted to go in with a harder brush and make it a more exact line that's fine. And again I'm going to transform it and warp it just to nudge these lines around a little bit. That's fine. You can zoom out to see how that looks. 